Hello YouTubers, diecast collectors, it's me, the J-Man 63. Today I am doing a review on the Cuda Wrecker and of course I'm redoing the uh, sign general that I have. Now, for me, I know there were a lot of comments posted on the general video that is my madly popular. By now on my YouTube, that has amassed quite a lot of views. And my thing is about people saying this and that about the whole Confederate flag thing. I know this is probably going to ruffle a few feathers, but, you know, it's a car. It's a flag. Guys, you know, I, I know people aren't going to quit whining about it, but if you don't know anything about Robert E. Lee, the South, the flag, the whatever, then, you know, unless you really know, don't assume, because there's all kinds of things touting the flag as, you know, a symbol of basically Southern pride, and personally, the show never, ever, ever had any type of connotations of racism. The show was always about family values, and the show preached... Uh, very good ethics, so people out there, everybody out there, uh, the comments, the, if you want to hash it out in the comments, that's on you, but I think people just need to quit complaining about it because the symbol's never going to go away. You can tear down as many statues as you want, guys, so it is what it is. Anyway, so we'll get on to the General Lee in a minute. First off, first off, how about Cooter's record, guys? Wow. And I will say the American, the General Lee definitely outshines for sure. I mean, compared to this one, I mean, there's still definitely, to me, the model here has better paint, of course. I definitely think the American muscle generally is definitely just amazing. And I got this one signed at Cooter's Last Stand down in Luray, Virginia. My mom's husband, Rick. My mom and her husband, Rick, took me, and this was a very amazing time to go down there. It was very cool. Um, so we'll get to that in a minute, and I'm just going to move this out of camera view here, and we'll get on to the truck. Now, I don't really know if this rear uh, bit does work. I haven't really tested anything out. Of course, I did try and hinge this red piece up. Unfortunately, I wound up breaking this red piece. Um, I managed to get it glued back on and it doesn't look too bad unless you're like really looking for that small defect of glue there. But other, other than that, you know, I didn't screw anything up, thankfully. But I don't know how to get these hooks off unless, unless there's a video on how to get the uh, tow booms to move and get the hooks to work and all that mumbo jumbo. I'm not going to bother with the setup after that happened and after I managed to get these two pieces glued back on and get the tow hooks back in their perspective hole right there. So if anybody's got a video demonstrating on how this rig works, please just let me know. But other than that, uh, this is kind of the star of the show here. I'm glad green light. <sighs> My buddy says this is a supercar collectibles casting. I'm not necessarily sure if it is or not, but green light, whatever the case may be, they did a really good job with this uh, model. Maybe I should have shown uh, the rear off first, but we'll get on to the rest of it. On the side here, Hazard County Garage. You have Cooter. Davenport Corporation, pretty cool. Um, the back here, again, very nice setup. And it's even got the marker lights on the back. It's kind of hard to hold this thing because it's kind of awkward. And of course, this is pr definitely going to go right back on my uh, shelf and where I had replaced some cars that I'd sold. I haven't showed off the man cave in a while, and I uh, threw out my back today, so I was trying, or threw out my back yesterday, I was trying to restring my LED lights, because 
I'd burn out a power supply a while back and I just got an extension cord and now I'm eventually going to try and get them hooked back up throughout my back doing that the other day but that's an unrelated topic anyway so and I even got the logoing up here I don't know if this is a decal I think it is a raised decal so to speak um, again the paint on this is decent it's not as much clear coat you can definitely tell there's I can look at this and tell you that I hope that this model never ever suffers from zinc pest, but I can tell you right now the paint doesn't look as good as the general. There's more orange peeling definitely from what I'm noticing. Maybe this just needs a bit of a polish. Maybe I'm the one just noticing it on the hood definitely where the wider area is. I just know you know when a model has decent quality paint however this might just benefit from a polish and I'm just hoping that that this might just be my fingers or something but um, it's a very nice model so yeah pretty pretty cool got the got these uh, I don't know what the style of wheels are but it definitely has the uh, heavy-duty wheels on it got the dual marker lights Steering does work on the front. Of course, the suspension doesn't, but I do have a feeling if Greenlight had really wanted to, they probably could have put working suspension. And you know what I'm just noticing? Look right there. There's a little scratch. I hadn't noticed that before, but let me see if it's... Yeah, it's just part of the wheel fender. Yeah. I didn't even notice that before, and I haven't even had this model. There's a little bit of a nick right there. Hmm. So weird. Anyway, yeah. But I, I don't know if it's a nick or something or what's going on there. I haven't even had this model for but so much time, and apparently that I just noticed. So... It does throw me off a little, unfortunately, and I don't know why that's there. Anyway, so, got some marker lights here, another marker light down here. I just don't know why that's there. Anyway, so, doors open, and you have to be careful pulling open this door. Um, interior, uh, here you go, pretty basic. Uh, basic done interior but they did a pretty decent job for what it is um, like I said if that paint scratch wasn't there it wouldn't be throwing me off so badly but sometimes that does happen in production and of course this is gonna fall down on me all right the other door does open but you don't want to yank it because it, these were really tight at first, but now they've kind of loosened up. And then you have sun visors. I don't think, yeah, these probably don't fold down like in the Ertl Authentics and Highway 61. And wheel does turn with the fronts, which is pretty cool. And anyway so it's a pretty nice model I'd say um, on my rating of 1 to 10 I'd probably give this about an 8 a 9 um, here's a chassis right here Chevrolet used under license been told this is a supercar collectible casting I can't tell you but the chassis is pretty relatively well detailed it's not you know too noticeable that they kind of made it that it's not it's not resin by any means it is die cast however most of the resin models the chassis to be frank they kind of look like crap this one isn't as bad it's not toyish so in terms of cooters wrecker i like this model i just kind of wish that there were my one thing my gripe is they don't have instructions on how to work 
the rear mechanism on the crane and that is a major gripe that I do have with this model and it yeah this is definitely a paint chip so yeah I will say the only thing that knocks a point off of this for me is the paint I think that these examples the paint is not there um, if that makes any sense I don't know but it is certainly a nice model I'm glad we finally have Cooter's Wrecker of course by contrast, speaking of trucks, I thought the Fall Guy truck was way, way better. I thought the Fall Guy truck was way better. And personally, I've looked up the history on the show. And I know people say ruffle people's feathers on the review, but Fall Guy truck was certainly a nice model, in my opinion, now that I look back on it. Anyway, that's enough of Cooter's Wrecker. That's a very nice model. And yes, I, I still like it. You know, it's a nice show piece. It definitely stands out. I definitely think that some of Greenlight's feel for quality has sort of fallen by the wayside. And the paint, yes, there definitely is some kind of a paint chip there. Now, let's move on to the real star of the show. That is, of course, the General Lee. I saw this guy on YouTube, his name is Happy Dude something, I don't know what his nationality is, and I'm not calling anyone out on YouTube personally, but on a model like this that's worth as much as it is now, the guy literally doesn't know that the doors don't open on this. I don't know if you haven't watched the show, my guy, but... He literally jammed a screwdriver in the side of the door and took a razor, and I... I couldn't even watch. It was just so cringy to me. And I'm like, sorry, dude, but you screwed up a valuable model. And I know he'd commented and I'd seen him, but yeah, that guy, to me, that guy is not too brilliant if he is literally trying to jam a screwdriver in a door and a razor that doesn't even open. Anyway, generally, very nice paint again. I can't obsess about how nice this paint is on this model. It's a very deep orange. Well, it's really tore red technically on the show. And then here is the signature signed in my name. And uh, John Schneider has a whole video on how people do the generally about the right way to do one and a wrong way to do one. And there is the Ertl version, which was the original. And if you can't score this one and try to score that, I guess. But this model just is leagues nicer than the Ertl model. And God knows what it's worth now because of the controversy there. <laughs> and then just got the signatures on, on the back. This one is Daisy Duke. She signed that. Signatures are very nice. Um, some people are gonna would hate hate that uh hate getting a model like this signed. However, um, buddy of mine Matt doesn't really like getting the model signed. He thinks it ruins it. Personally, I don't care. It's a really nice piece. Again, nice turbine wheels. Everything is absolutely correct that um, should be, especially the interior, which you know. Obviously, this outshines any uh, a lot of the interiors on a lot of models. The only models I have that are roughly this kind of caliber of interior is usually the Highway 61 variety, which Highway 61 is kind of ertle in its own regard, so interior is very nice. Nice so one there, of course. Uh, it's, again, very authentic to the show. And I am just like handling this like very carefully. I don't even want to touch the signatures because I don't want to smear anything. But the interior is just amazing. Very nice model. Um, I, you could say Rick kind of got me into the higher end stuff when I started collecting. This to me is what high end in terms of models is about. The nice push bar. And just so you know. The lights do rotate. I am not going to try to rotate them because uh, this is too much of a pain in the neck. And I know they move. I know the 
headlights move, so I'm not going to mess with that. Anyway, the hood opens on these spring and scissor hinges. Now, I have a Yanko Camaro where these can be a bit of a pain in the neck. Um, of course, my buddy uh, Matt had to cut the springs out of his Yanko because his hood wasn't would just spring open. Um, for some reason, some companies don't know how to get spring and scissor hinges right sometimes, and if you don't, it can be problematic to the hood opening and closing. Um, for whatever reason, I'm looking at this, and yeah, they are they are spring and scissor, and the motor, of course, is very well done. Excuse the glare. I just... Ertl always has had, or the Authentics molds have always been some of the best ones out there, personally, in my opinion. And if you're going to get a 69 or 68 charger and you can't attain this version, I recommend this mold for sure, because this is literally the best, uh, the most well done 69 charger out there. Um, unless you're talking about GMP territory, which this model is about on par with some of the GMP stuff, I would say. So yeah, it's a very nicely done four barrel. I think it's a 340, I believe. Looking in the back, it's a 344 barrel. Engines in the show were sometimes different from certain stuff, so... I would say the motors were sometimes different in the show. I would say they're not always going to be the same. Of course, underneath the valance here, got a got the latch, got everything that should be there. If it's there, it's definitely there in representation. All right, I'm going to carefully close this. And yeah, now, now the hood's actually shut properly. I hadn't had the hood shut properly before I'd done this. Okay. And the seats are actually got a vinyl feel. Um, again, to my guy out there, uh, happy dude, whatever his name is, you probably screwed up a thousand dollar model. I can't even, that's infuriating. Another infuriating thing I saw was there was this Superbird, this Plymouth Superbird. This lady was literally had one foot on the bumper, one foot up here. She was sitting on the freaking wing. I saw that and I'm like, that is the most disrespectful thing I have ever seen. That's almost as disrespectful as that guy jamming open the door and breaking the model. But, you know, who am I to judge? Anyway, so here is the trunk flooring right here. Very nicely done. Got the rear license plate. So... Yeah, if you're trying to open the door on this, it's kind of the difference between who, in my opinion, is a collector and who is kind of a poser. And I hate to use the word poser, but if you're a noob and you don't know what you're doing, this is probably a model that I would recommend staying away from if you're not if you're not into high end stuff. Anyway, I'll quit ranting about that. Suspension works very cool. It's a really nice piece. And the steering, of course, works connected to the steering wheel. I'll show the underside off real quick. And I'm going to hold it by the side here. I don't want to screw up the signatures. And this weathering. Yeah, these uh, generals, very nicely done model. And, uh, yeah, I like, like everything that Authentics does. The Authentics molds. You can even see the A right there. It's a nice piece. All right, guys. Well, that wraps up the review. If you want Cooter's Wrecker, I still would recommend it. I'd recommend going to grab it before that model becomes probably unattainable. I think Greenlight could have definitely done a little better with the paint. I have older stock photos, so I might have to go back and see, you know, why that's going on hopefully it wasn't me but it just seems like a small issue but anyway all right guys well that wraps it up for me and uh cooter's wrecker and the lee 
two very nice models and if you haven't added the general to your collection good luck because that model is very valuable and again not to hate on anybody but if you don't know about the show and stuff like that do your research anyway guys that has to do um that has to uh be the end of this that's the end of my review and for diecast and everything else it has to be the j-man 6-3 all right guys see you later bye